Welcome to another Microsoft Access video tutorial. Today we're going to talk about macros, creating some basic macros and then showing what you can do uh, with macros. Now do understand if you're familiar with Word and Word macros, um, macros in Microsoft Access are, are totally different. In Word you record a macro and it's recording it straight to VBA code. In Access, there's a, an entire module just devoted to macros, and macros in their native language uh, are a, a, a language by themselves. Um, you can actually edit the macro and not be looking at VBA code. So let's, uh, let's open the Access database here, and I'll show you what I mean. If we go to the Create ribbon here, uh, what we're talking about is this macros and cold code section over here. Um, this is where we'll talk about Visual Basic Code and how to, how to do that in a couple later videos. Um, but right now we'll talk about macros here. And macros here in this interface, you can see that we're going to actually choose commands to run. And those commands can be, are also listed over here in the various actions. Now, there's a certain security feature with Microsoft Access that doesn't allow you to run macros if they are dangerous. In other words, if they delete data or they export or import data. In other words, in order to see everything that, my, that macros have to offer, you have to turn this show all actions on. And what that does is, for example, there's a one, like, one command that's set warnings and set warnings doesn't appear on the list unless you actually turn on show all actions. Now, if I do this, I can actually see the set warnings and I can turn those warnings dialog boxes off. And, and it's something that you'll fairly frequently do when you're running a macro because you don't want the user to have to respond to every uh, every delete of data or update of data or, I mean, these boxes are the ones that say, we're going to append so many records to a table. Are you okay with that? And you hit click yes or no. In order to, to turn those dialog boxes off, you set the warnings to no, and then you set them back to yes at the end of your, at the end of your code. Okay. So set warnings is a, a is a, command that you'll use a lot, but you can only get that to that one along with several others by show, putting on the show all macros actions button there. Now other actions over here, you can see the, the list here, a uh, delete a record, edit items, and you see them classified over here. It, this is a duplicate list to this. This one is just in alphabetical order where this one puts the actions in categories. I tend to use a a lot of um, macro actions that are, you know, fairly standard. So I'll, I will tend to just start typing in here because I know what they're named. And after a while, you'll get comfortable with open query, open table, close form, those types of things or close object. Um, you'll get very familiar with them and be able to just start typing here and you'll get them. Now, when creating a macro, the first one I want to do is I just want to create a simple message box macro. So I'm going to go ahead and click on in this field message box and I want message hello hello world okay I'm going to turn the beep to no I don't want it to beep when it comes up type title um, I'll leave hello world as the title of the box as well. And it'll be a simple um, simple dialog box that if you leave it at none, you just have an OK button on the dialog box and it'll, it'll just pop up. Although you could have a critical one, a warning, a warning, a different type of warning and just an information box. Um, various types that you can use there. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and when I um, run it of course I want to save it so I'm just going to leave it at macro one there and uh, when I run it I get a box that says hello world now the title this is the title here hello world the message inside is is this hello world here 
and then just being a type none, you can just get an OK button here, OK? So when I click OK, the box goes away. Now that might not seem to be all that useful to you, but here, let's go ahead and go create here and let's put, let's create a, a quick form in form design. And I want to insert a button here. So I'm gonna click button here. And when I go here down to miscellaneous, I can run a macro, okay? And as I define that button, here's a bunch of macros and I went, I saved macro one here, and when I click next here, I can click on here and give it a title. So giving it a title here, click next and finish, and I have a hello button, hello world button here. If I want to view it in design view, I have just a single button here. When I click on it, I get the hello world dialog box. So here's where the usefulness really takes off with a macro is you can have a macro run a bunch of functions for you and i want to show you how i tend to set up my macros um, i'm going to go ahead and clo close this form and save it just as form one and so i'm going to go back to uh, d back down here i'm going to open this macro in design view and the way i set thing tend to set things up i you notice this demo database here has a whole bunch of macros. Um, I tend to not do a whole bunch of macros like that. I'll tend to have a macro uh, for buttons, for example. So let me show you how I do that. The first thing I do is there's um, a command called stop all macros, okay? Now that, um, that particular command is useful and I put it at the I put it at the top here, and then I create sub macros. And this one is going to be sub one. I'm gonna call it, um, I could call it imports or exports or um, backup. And for, for this particular one, I'm gonna put backup con, uh, contacts, okay? And so we'll call that backup contacts and I'm going to go ahead and put leave that one right here I'm also going to create another sub macro and I'm going to call this one hello world and I'm going to take this message box here and put it inside this macro so now I've got a message box here inside this macro and I'll go ahead and leave that macro there okay so this macro will have my message box in it. Now, what I've done is on that other form, I'm gonna to have to modify the location of this macro. And I'll show you how to do it because I just moved it around. It won't find it. Um, and it'll give me an, an error message. So in my macro uh, backup contents, if I click here, it'll open up this action. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a few things. I'm gonna open a query here. And the query that I wanna open is going to be delete my contacts backup. Then I wanna open another query that's going to be to append my contacts backup. So what I've done is I've created a macro that allows me to uh, purge the data in the backup and append a new backup to that table. Now, the one thing, like I said before, is I don't necessarily want my users to constantly have to respond to dialog boxes, but let's go ahead and show you how this one ends up working. I'm gonna go ahead and save my macro and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close it here. And I wanna go to the form, form one, that I put my hello world button on here and I'm going to go to design view uh, first off to correct this one. And remember, in order to correct the contents or the action under a button, you go over here to the event and then here you'll notice that I've got macro and I've got, now I've got macro one dot backup contents and macro one dot hello world. So you, this is the context or the syntax that you see the sub macros in 
is you'll see the, the macro name and the sub macro is hello world. So I'm gonna correct this one to say hello world there. Then I'm going to put a new button. I'm gonna go ahead and put a new button under here. And I'm going to go ahead and run another macro. And notice my list here. This is another way that as you're setting up a button, you see the same list that was over here under the event. So I'm going to go ahead and click on backup contents here. And I'm going to click there. And I'm going to put text on my button here instead of a picture of um, backup contacts. And I'm going to click next. And I can give the command button a name if I want to. I'm going to just leave it command one. I'm usually not too particular about what the buttons are called. Um, when you get really heavy into, into the programming and you've got a lot of objects that you're dealing with, uh, you'll probably want to go ahead and give specific names to those, uh, to those macros. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll put it in design view. Now, this is, this is what I'm meaning by the fact that I don't want the users to have to constantly respond to data. Um, to data dialog box. So I'm going to click backup contents here. And this is the dialog box that you see if you don't tell it to this, set it to set warnings off. So this is, these are the warning dialog box. You're about to run a delete query. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to run a delete query. You're about ready to delete zero rows. Obviously there's no data here yet. Um, and then, oh, I'm about ready to run an append query and I'm going to append a hundred rows. And so in the, in the course of just a very short time, the, the user has had to click four different dialog boxes and you really, you know, you don't want to have, have them forced to do that. And so what we'll do is go ahead and uh, we'll leave this up because we can go ahead and modify the macro and put this in design view by going in here to, the, to this again. And we're going to do set warnings. Uh oh, we didn't set our actions back. So now I can get set warnings and I'm going to turn, turn it off and I'm going to do a set warnings and turn it on. And I'm going to put the turning it off just before the open query. And when I collapse those, you can see that um, now I have my set warnings being turned off. I run the queries. I have the set warnings being turned on. Well, this might be a little bit difficult for a user to deal with without a little bit more information. In other words, did it really do it? <laughs> you, you don't want them to click multiple times to just to determine whether or not it did it. So I'm going to go ahead and add here a message box. And I'm going to say um, contacts backed up. Okay, and I'm not going to put a title on. I'm just going to leave it without a title. I'm going to close that message box and I'm going to move the message box up above set warnings here. Okay, so now you can see it all laid out here and I'm going to save the macro and come over here to my form and I'm going to say backup context, contents backed up. Now, since I didn't fill in a title, notice it took uh, and put the title here of the application up here and, and put it in the title. So contents are backed up. I'm okay. Now, during that little quick burst, it both deleted the data and added the new data back to it. Uh, my hello world one is still there and it's working just fine. And so what it al this allows you to do literally is to create macros that do a lot of work. My, uh, my databases tend to pull in data and analyze data, give reports. So I'll have macros that, that go under those buttons and they'll run an import. And an impo import is actually one of those one of those items that it doesn't like you to to run on the, on the show all act shows. So import export data is your command there. And if you do that, you can actually run an import that you've already saved or an export that you've already saved. 
lots of different commands, a lot of flexibility that you can have in running macros. And you can uh, seamlessly put these under buttons, communicate with the user as they're running and be able to go from item to item. You need to explore. There's a lot of different commands you can use and it adds an incredible amount of flexibility. When you want to fully deploy your database, uh, a lot of times you can create a macro, then turn those to VBA code and the VBA code runs just like if you've written it in native VBA and it does it very, very quickly. So I hope you've enjoyed this little macros tutorial. I hope you understand that macros are powerful and e easy to create, easy to use in Microsoft Access. So hope to see you again later. Thanks. I want to thank you so much for viewing this video. We have great content on, on the site and I'm putting more content out every single day. There's a link to one of them on the side of the screen over here. Also, please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So hit that subscribe button a little bit lower on the other side of the screen and hope to see you again. Thanks.